The grand home of Pawnee Bill and his wife May remains much as it was when the couple lived here 100 years ago. They built their dream home in 1910 after years on the road. William Gordon Lilly, show name Pawnee Bill, started out working in Buffalo Bill's Wild West show. After marrying May, a Quaker from Pennsylvania, they started their own historic Wild West show. May was one of the stars, billed as the champion girl horseback shot in the West. In 1908, Pawnee Bill and Buffalo Bill joined forces to create a new extravaganza. And in the 1912 cast, there were about 500 people that worked and performed and produced the Wild West Show. And it was called Buffalo Bill's Wild West and Pawnee Bill's Great Far East. And you can really see um, the two sides of the show in this photograph. Erin Brown is the collection specialist for the Pawnee Bill Ranch and Museum. She says this picture shows the cast was made up of people from all over the world. With people over here representing the American West, cowboys and the popular cowgirls and vaqueros, um, American Indians. And then over here, the Great Far East, there were people from Asia and Africa and the Middle East and Eastern Europe, even a troop of Australian um, Aborigines. Outside the house on the ranch, the original barn built in 1926 still stands. Today, it houses some treasures from a bygone era. We have some uh, buck wagons or buckboard wagons that are original. We have a chuck wagon. We have a uh, Surrey. We have a Conestoga. Uh, wagon. Ranch and museum director Ronnie Brown says one of the rare things to see here is this mural. It had been hidden from view and was discovered by construction workers in Lamont, Oklahoma. Because this was an amazing find. Smithsonian said it was the find of the century, you know, for this type of, you know, item. The mural was advertising an upcoming show in Blackwell, Oklahoma in October of 1900. To understand how big the show was and the logistics of moving all the actors, horses and tents, you can look at this miniature display housed in the museum on the ranch. You think uh, trains and, and then they would get on the ships and go to Europe and just logistics of this just boggles me, yeah. my mind. I just can't, I can't imagine what it would take to do something like this. I mean, it's, it's like real, literally an army. In the museum, you'll find all kinds of memorabilia and items belonging to May and her husband, Pawnee Bill. His clothing, saddle and boots, her gun, her holsters, and other personal effects. Pawnee Bill's stagecoach is a centerpiece. It was here on the ranch, and all that really was left of it was just the metal. Everything, all the wood was gone. And when the museum opened up in 1969-70, uh, the Frizzell family of Oklahoma City was asked by the uh, Department of Tourism to restore the stagecoach, in which they did, and they were famous. I mean, they're, they're well known for, as wagon restorers, and they did a magnificent job. Outside the museum on the day we visited, restoration work was in progress on this old log cabin which Pawnee Bill had built. The cabin wasn't, we think, designed to last 100 years. It was used as an exhibit uh, as part of Pawnee Bill's theme of keeping the West alive to show people what, at least what he thought, pioneer life had been like. Bill Bailey from Wheat Ridge, Colorado is a restoration historian. He replaced rotting logs with logs from the exact same species of tree used to construct it so long ago. At one time, Pawnee Bill had the largest herd of bison in the world and today, buffalo still roam the ranch along with longhorn cattle and several draft horses. Out here in the country, visitors are invited to stop by and learn about a great showman and showgirl who shaped part of Oklahoma's colorful history. For ONR, I'm Liz Exon.